Hey guys, and welcome back to the podcast. It's been two weeks, I think, and that's because the Nations League is not important. No, that's I'm only joking. For everyone that loves international football, which I don't think is many of you, probably 1% of you, uh, we are going to very briefly touch upon international football, mainly because England are doing terribly. And that's when everyone starts talking about England because we all want to slate them. Uh, we're also going to talk about the Premier League coming up and restarting. Thank God for that. And uh, we will get out, get these guys' views on any other buzzing topics. Uh, so I've got with me Ash. Ash, how are you doing? Yeah, all good, thanks. Good, good. Um, we've had two weeks of not having to worry about Chelsea, so that's good. And uh, Ali, how about you? I mean, to be fair, yeah. you can worry about Liverpool as well, to be honest. How are you doing? <laughs> I'm not too bad, bro. I'm not too bad. To be honest, after Liverpool's start this season, but I've just detached myself, man. Like I'm a free spirit. It's all right. Don't <laughs> worry. You, you, you'll win one game and then you'll be invested again. Oh yeah, um, I'll definitely be back. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. And the international break was needed because you know if you don't want to watch any mm. football, then you feel like you're not obligated. Anyway, talking of international football, England have had uh, a adverse run of results lately. Uh, drew against Germany 3 or lost to Italy 1-0. And they lost to Hungary. They've lost Hungary twice in that group. They've been, they haven't they got like relegated from their group in Nations League. I mean, I didn't even know that Portugal had won it, uh, by the way. So that's how much attention I how much you know I pay attention to Nations League. Euros, World Cup, fine. But Nations League, I don't know, just something about it just seems like glorified friendlies. But I know there's qualification, not qualification, sorry, seedings involved. And rankings, right? So if you do well in it, your rankings higher, which means that you get less chance of uh, drawing higher ranked opponents in, say, the Euros or the World Cup is my understanding of it as well. Um, okay, let's just start with with England and your guys' thoughts. Ash, I mean, what's gone wrong after the fairy tale run at the Euros and everyone saying Gareth Southgate is the you know, the best thing since sliced bread? Uh, what's happened since? Yeah, it's not it's not looking good for for Qatar at the moment, I'd say. But I don't, I don't know. I think I think selection is a big problem, and actually just knowing who his best eleven is, I think he's just not been able to figure that out. Um, players have just been so inconsistent. A you know for the club teams, and then also um, on international duty. Um, I'd say. There, there is a kind of a, a potential that, you know, he has been manager for a while and perhaps, you know, tactically and how, how he's kind of um, manages the group, that's kind of, what, that potentially <clears throat> that's gone stale. Um, but the results have been really poor for a while um, after, as you said, some really good tournaments. Um, but, yeah, I don't know. I think it's a case of um, there is, there is, obviously a, a good squad of players with a lot of quality and you know i think i think there is there is enough quality to still have a, a good world cup regardless of kind of who's the manager um and it does look like this may be his last tournament um and so despite a bad run of games um they showed some good fight in the in the germany match and i'm actually not too kind of um, apprehensive about the World Cup, but I feel like having watched you know some of the young players, especially people like Bellingham, Rice, really impressed with them. So Saka, Saka as well, Saka and Mount had a great impact in the in the Germany match. So I mean, it could be crazy, but I'm actually not too skeptical going into the World Cup. I've, I haven't got high expectations, that's for sure. Like I'm not saying we're going to go semi final final, but um, it's not all doom and gloom for me. Yeah, interesting. Ali, what's your viewpoint? I think, to be honest, Gareth Southgate, he, I mean, I've always backed him. I always thought, you know, after the World Cup run and as with the Euros run, uh, you know, the running we had for the Euros, I think Gareth Southgate has done well enough for England. And to an extent, he's brought the, a much better side of Maguire. So, but I think his luck is starting to run out. I think he's... Everyone's starting to become irked by him, by his selection of players. I mean, I understand he he's chose like 11 defenders or so when he's got so many better attacking players. Even within the defenders, he didn't pick Trent. Even though Trent has had, quite frankly, a shock of a season so far, 
nevertheless, he's still a, a huge name and I think he should have taken him. And I mean, it's the Nations League. Like you said, it's not a major tournament. So on that basis, he should try experiment with more attacking players. Maybe it could work out. Maybe he could come give him a different avenue rather than playing defensive all the time. But I think he's starting to lose his luck. He's, try, he's getting on very thin ice. And I'd hate for something bad to happen to him. You know, I'd hate for him to leave or get sacked. But I guess we have to wait and see. Yeah, it's an interesting one because I think it's quite easy for us, I guess, to forget the Euros and how what he did there. And you know, clearly he picked up an England side that needed a lot of care, a lot of kind of cuddles, and he gave that. You know, <coughs> got the morale up, and obviously they did really well at the Euros, which was great. And look, I mean, the results haven't been good, but. In saying that doesn't mean, as you said, Ash, they can't do well at the World Cup. I think the alarming thing is that they've got almost an embarrassment of riches, and I feel like they've got a much better team than that Euros team. Uh, but I'm maybe thinking that he doesn't know how to best utilize these players because they, he's got so many creative players. I don't think he knows how to get the best out of them, and that might be worrying because uh, at the Euros, uh, if I'm not mistaken, he didn't have Foden um, and he didn't have like a Bellingham. Right, so um, he had he had Kane and Sterling up front, and then he kind of just put, you know, blocks of four uh, behind him and said, "Look, try and get past us." Or blocks of it would have been, uh, I fucking knew my maths right. No, blocks of well, that's no, that's thirteen people. Blocks of three uh, behind Sterling and Kane, whatever it was. So um, yeah, I, I just think it's an interesting one to to see how it gets on come the World Cup, but. I'm I'm a bit skeptical about about his maybe technical prowess or strategic ability to actually adapt as well and play a different brand of football. I feel like maybe he only has a plan A, and that's it. Mm. And it's like if you guys can't fit into my plan A, which is to kind of hit hit you guys on the counter attack, or hit opponents on the counter attack, and be very very solid at the back, then basically see ya. And maybe that's also why Trent didn't get included because he can be very kind of, he can be very suspect to the back. So we'll see. Uh, actually, here's a quick question. I know you guys might not know straight away, but I mean, Ash, if you were to pick an 11 for England at the moment, like, what would be your 11? Yeah, that's a tough one. Um, I mean, it has to be Pickford in goal after Pope stinker. I mean, I do rate Pope, but he's just like it was flashbacks of Rob Green when he made that error for the Germany, the Ger- Ger- Germans' third goal. Um, I'd like to see uh, Maguire out. Um, Tamori, I think, deserves to be in. He's been really good for AC Milan. Uh, I just don't think Southgate really rates him and trusts him, but I'd like to see him in. Um, I think, I think um, Carl Walker's a good player. Um, pretty consistent, and then I probably look to maybe. I mean, I don't want to, but Eric Dyer as a so that's it, my back three, and then I go probably Shaw. I like Chilwell, but I think Shaw probably plays. Jamie plays quite well for England. Shaw left left wing back, Reese James right wing back. Then I'd go. Bellingham, Rice, Mount, midfield. And then Sterling and Kane. Mm. I, and like actually, Saka, the other... I like Saka, but that's, yeah. That's the thing. The other question is, would you want to... So say you have full reign, would you play five at the back? Yeah, I think I would. I think I would. Um, just because I think the wing backs, you know, could be a, a real threat. And it has it has worked for us in the past, um, but yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I just think yeah, it suits a lot of the players in that team. Um, I know you know the Chelsea players, the Tottenham players, they all play in in, in five at the back formations. So um, yeah, I'd probably go for that. Okay, Ali, what about you? Ramsdale, Arnold. Tomori, Stones, Shaw, Bellingham, Rice, then centre-attacking mid between Phil Foden and Mason Mount, 
on the right probably Saka, uh, and on the left, um, on the right either Saka or Sancho, and on the left, so on the four two three three ones on the four uh, three on the left, I'd have either um, what's his name, uh, Grealish, or what's the, what's the play you just said, Sterling, Sterling, and up front Harry Kane, very mm -hmm. attacking, very it utilizes the more attacking talent that England have, the more creative talent that England have. And especially if you have Foden and Grealish, both play, both English, both both play for City, I think it would help the team chemistry a hell of a lot more. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Ali's been playing FIFA, obviously. He wants his chemistry up to 100. Um, fully, fully. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I'm similar, but I think maybe our picks, Ali, are a bit... You know, we're going a bit fancy football on it. And thinking, you know, we, these are the players we would like to see. Because I'm similar to you. I would like to see Ramsey on goal. I think at the back, it's interesting because I would like to see Tomori. I don't really know who who I mean, who partners him. Maybe Stones, but yeah. Uh, but Stones is still a little bit. I, I don't know. I just can't quite trust him <clears throat> still. But I think he's better than Maguire, so fine. Um, at right back, it's you know you have Trent or James. I, I would go for James yeah. at the moment. Because I Maybe. think James is just better defensively at the moment. Um, but then left back, I'll go Chilwell. And, and, then, and then across the, the midfield, I think, yeah, I agree. I'd go Rice and Bellingham. And then I'd go Foden. I think I like Mason Mount, but I think Foden is just so good. I just think you have to include him. Mm -hmm. Maybe you include him in the front three, but I just think he's, he's so creative. If, you, if you're able to have Bellingham and Rice behind him and kind of anchor, then you can have Foden be creative. I guess that's why in a five, he's probably better suited because he then has more freedom, potentially. Uh, and then I'd go Sterling, Kane and Saka. Uh, so quite similar to, to you, Ali. I think that's pretty much what I'd pick, which is interesting. I mean, Henderson is, you know, that's uh, Jordan Henderson is obviously a very good player, but I'm not quite sure he's got the legs anymore, potentially, mm -hmm. to, to play in that holding role, especially if it's going to be two holding midfielders with four behind them. I'm not sure, but yeah, we'll see. We'll see. I think it will be, of course, five at the back. I don't think it's going to be four at the back, and I think it's going to be more similar to what Ash was saying come the World Cup. But we'll we'll see. Who knows? Who knows? It could change. Mm -hmm. Right? Is there anything on uh, England that you guys want to touch on before we move on to Premier League? I'd say Harry Maguire. I mean, Harry Maguire. He's someone who. Here's the thing about him: as poor as he has been in the league and for Manchester United. I think for England, he's actually been decent. He's been okay. And that's why when my team selection, as controversial as this sounds, I would swap out probably Stones for Maguire because Maguire can play well for England. He plays well for England. And I think that's something that Southgate always has. He's always had that sense of loyalty. And I think back to your previous point earlier on in the video, uh, Faison, where you said he, he likes to give a cuddle, put an arm around the players. I think Southgate does that a lot for Maguire. That boosts Maguire's confidence. So I think I probably may swap out Stones for Maguire. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maguire, I, I don't know. I, don't know. I just, I, I don't rate him at all and it sounds harsh. But Chelsea were about to get him anyway. Right, okay, on to the Premier League then. We've got some uh, interesting matches coming up and I'm glad it's back. I need to look at my fantasy football team because uh, it's probably a wreck due to injuries now. And we've got the North London derby. Where's Aaron going when you need him? Uh, which will be pretty spicy. Arsenal and Tottenham mm. and Arsenal at home, of course. Chelsea, Crystal Palace. Liverpool got Brighton at home. And then we've got the Manchester derby, which is going to be massive because Manchester United, of course, have come into some good form. Manchester City of, uh, I mean, there's Manchester, Manchester City at the moment. What else do we need to say about them? Haaland's going to be under the microscope. They're playing at home City. They'll be expected to win. Uh, it, but it will be a tough game, I think, potentially. And for United, they'll be looking to, to see the results. So, I guess what we can do is let's first of all touch on the Manchester derby then and City and United quickly. I mean, what do you guys think? Can United cause the upset, Ash? I think it's always difficult to read into these games when there's an international break, especially you know with the Queen's death and stuff. It's been a long time since um, the Premier League was on. So I think it's difficult to... Um, you know, predict and you know, form kind of has gone out the window by now. Um, but I, yeah, I think although Man U actually have quite a good record at the Etihad, uh, 
I think the city just with I mean, yeah, you can't really talk about it without talking about Haaland. The guy just seems to score every game, at least one goal. Um, and I think he's just going to cause havoc for that Man U defence, which although has had a couple good weeks, I think is still um, pretty fragile. Um, I mean, Varane's obviously been playing well, um, but still, yeah, I just think City have far too much quality. And yeah, I expect, I expect them to get a win. Yeah, what about you, Ali, on the same page? <clears throat> Similarly, I mean, I think it, it would definitely be interesting. It would be a very tight game. I think, I, I do think City will be the favourites. Having said that, something tells me that Martinez, I mean, I was discussing this with colleagues as well, that I think Martinez will give Haaland a battle. As weird, as weird as that sounds, considering the physical differences between them, Haaland ha- now knows that he can. He thinks he has the swagger, the confidence he has. He can bully the Premier League. You're not going to get that against Martinez. Martinez is like a pit bull or a Jack Russell Terrier. He will not stop until you stop. So I think he's going to match Haaland's energy and he's going to tell Haaland that I'm here. So depending on how that goes, that could massively sway the outcome of the game. I think United will be coming in with the underdog mentality and knowing that they've got there's less pressure on them. Let's prove a point. We're coming into form. Let's prove a point. Let's see how we do. It will be tough in terms for me to decide who would win. But if I have to do edge it, if I have to edge it, I will probably say City by one or two goals. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I'm on the similar page. I think. I just feel with the crowd behind them and I know United have been in some good form as of late, but I almost think that the international break maybe has come at the wrong time for them because mm. they were just gaining momentum and I, I don't think this is a great match for them to suddenly come back to. So uh, I'm going to go with City 3-1. We may as well go through predictions because we're going to do the rest of them, but mm-hmm. um, Ash, what, what are you going to go for? I'm going to go City 2-1. Ali? Same, City 2-1. 2-1, copycats. Right, okay. Uh, (laughs) Then we can talk about, I guess, the North London derby. I mean, for you guys, of course, you're not an Arsenal or Tottenham Tottenham Hotspur supporter, but Arsenal will be in some really good form this season uh, before Manchester United, of course, extinguish that flame a little bit. Tottenham have had an up and down season so far. Uh, what are we thinking? Arsenal at home as well. Is this going to be a, an Arsenal victory or will Tottenham be able to spoil the party early? I think Arsenal will have the momentum. Don't get me wrong. I think Tottenham, despite the up and down season, they're still a force to be reckoned with. I mean, Conte doesn't go for teams that he can't win the league with. So I think Tottenham can pose a serious, genuine threat. It will be an interesting game, very intense game, but I will give it to Arsenal 2-1 or 3-1. 3-1, I would say. 3-1 to Arsenal. Ash? Um, I think, yeah, there's a... like. It's weird, actually, because like, it feels like the first North London derby where both teams are actually somewhat good. Like, like I just don't think that was real. Like, at least one of them were bad. In the like last ten years, <laughs> um, so yeah, I, I mean, there's a feel good factor around Arsenal at the, at the moment, and I think that might help. Um, so I'll, I'd give them the edge. I'd probably go two two one Arsenal, but I'm excited for that because I feel like North London derbies like never disappoint. They're always pretty mm. um, pretty exciting. There's usually goals. Yeah, agreed. Agree. I'm going to go 3-2 Arsenal. I think it's going to be a really tight one. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if it ends up being a draw. But yeah, I feel like they're going to re- have to rely heavily on Son and Kane. Did you guys see the Son hat-trick, by the way? We've got to talk about that. Did you guys see his, his hat-trick? No, I've, I, I've heard it, but I, I haven't My seen it. My God. The left Daniel. foot finish. Unbelievable. I mean, He's massively it's underrated. One, it's not the one I scored on Sunday, Ash. No, <laughs> <laughs> it's like except about except about a hundred times further out. Uh, but he literally p- picks up on his left foot and just like literally takes one step, takes uh, one touch basically onto his left foot and just curls it top corner from like twenty five yards. I mean, unbelievable finish. Like with his weaker foot, which we know he's. I mean, he's almost two footed anyway. But I mean, it was such a good finish. The other two finishes are great as well, both from 
Well, one was from outside the box as well, uh, right foot uh, into the corner. Again, like from a long distance. And the third one was a bit bit lucky, but kind of got a little bit of a deflection of the keeper, but it doesn't matter. Uh, Kane was being really greedy, screaming for it. And you're like, just let him get the hat trick. You're like 40 up, I think it was at the time. But yeah, anyway, I mean, it's just he's so good. Uh, I would love to have him at Chelsea, but that's not going to happen. Uh, but yeah, I think they rely heavily on, especially Son, but of course Kane as well. So uh, they'll need to be on song for them, no pun intended, for them to actually uh, <laughs> pose a threat for sure. So Elite we'll mentality from Son, right? Having Because he hadn't scored yet and he got benched. And then to come yeah. on and just score a hat trick in what, like 15 minutes or something. That's Unbelievable. Just, like, incredible. And the way the way that he on um, that, that left foot finish, I'm not I just he was just so confident. Like, the way he hits it, I was just like, what the hell? I mean my brother were watching the highlights of the goals, and I was just like, How? It was just so good. I mean, he is unbelievable. I think he's just so good. Uh, I really do. I think he's uh, an unbelievable player. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I think people don't realise how good he is sometimes. Yeah. Maybe because I... Kane takes the limelight at times, but he is unreal. Uh, banana peel. Right, okay. Let's go and talk about the rest of the matches then on the weekend. We can, I guess, well, not. Uh, sounds a bit harsh, but some of them we're not going to talk. T- we can't touch upon every single match, so... Uh, we'll go through and obviously get predictions from you guys, but I'll, we'll touch upon some of the more notable matches with the bigger teams. Apologies to those listening or watching uh, who you are, say, a Brentford fan. Uh, but Bournemouth-Brentford uh, is one coming up. We'll go quickly round uh, predictions, Ash and Ali. So we'll go Ash first. I'm going to say 2-1 Brentford. Okay. 2-0 two nil Brent- two nil Brentford. 1-0 Bournemouth. Okay. And and then Palace Chelsea, so we're away, uh, Chelsea. I'm shocked. Did you see his face? Well, oh, well, Bournemouth. Bournemouth <laughs> you picked Bournemouth over Brentford. Bournemouth at home, actually... why not, man? Yeah, why not? <laughs> why not? If, if Bournemouth win now, you're going to look like a genius. You must exactly. have had a long day at work today. You must have had a long day for you to. It was pretty long. <laughs> Sorry, Brentford fans. Uh, <laughs> Palace Chelsea, so Palace at home, uh, no, I mean, it's not an easy. Not an easy game whatsoever. I've I've watched quite a few Palace Chelsea games uh, at Selhurst Park. <sighs> we should get the win. You would hope. I'm going to go two one Chelsea. But Ash, what's your thoughts and uh, predictions? I'm not confident. Firstly, <laughs> it's Porter's first Premier League game. Even though he's been here a while now, it seems. Yeah. He's, he's had like no players at Cobham. They've all been away on international duty. That's true. And yeah, as you said, Palace away is always a tough game. We actually do have quite a good record there, but Sell has part of that is a tough one. Uh, I don't think we're going to win. I'm, I'm, I'm going to say, actually, me being confident, I'm going to say one all, but I'm not confident at all. Okay. Ali? I say one nil Chelsea, but it'll be a hard fought win. Yeah. Yeah, it's always hard fought. Selhurst Park, as Man City saw pretty recently, uh, getting the win, but they'd never beaten Patrick Vieira's side uh, in the last couple of years. So it shows how tough it is to beat them. Uh, Fulham, Newcastle, Ash and Ali, quick predictions. 1-1. One, one. I say 1-1. One, one. I'm going to go 2-0. Two. 2-0, two, okay. I'm going to go... 2-1 Newcastle. Uh, Liverpool at home against Brighton. Ash, what are you thinking? I'd say 3-1 Liverpool. I say 2-1 Liverpool for us. Okay. 2-1. 4-0 uh, Brighton. No. <laughs> I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go two 0 Liverpool. <laughs> uh, actually I'm gonna go two one Liverpool. Two one. Uh, Southampton, Everton. Uh, Ash? Ooh. Uh, 1-0 Everton. Oh, Ali? Are they play a Southampton home or away? Southampton at home. Uh, 2-0 Southampton. Go 1-0. West Ham and Wolves. Ash? Two Ws. Two. Two. High scoring game, Ali. 
2 0 West Ham. Okay, I'm gonna go. We got one nil West Ham. Um, we've gone through Manchester City and Man United, so Leeds and Aston Villa at Leeds. Ash, two one Leeds. I say no no. Oh, actually, that's true. We haven't had any nil nils. We've been pretty uh, optimistic with the with the score lines, but now I'm going to go. I'm going to carry on being optimistic and go two one Leeds. Leicester, Nottingham Forest, Ash. Yeah, one nil Leicester. Mm. Ali. Yeah, probably the same. One nil Leicester. I'm gonna go nil nil just because I feel like I, I like the sound of a nil nil. Uh, so why not? Why not? Okay, so that's uh, our predictions for the weekend, and of course we have the Champions League continuing next. Uh, well, m- midweek I guess coming up, which will be nice because we've. I mean, the players must be absolutely knackered. They just come from international duty to now playing, uh, not just on the weekend, but midweek as well. And they probably would have played two matches as well midweek and on the weekend for their... I mean, anyway. Anyway, whatever. Doesn't matter. Liverpool, Ali are on a bit of a sticky wicket, of course. They're joined mm-hmm. on three points with Ajax uh, in second. Uh, Chelsea, we are... Uh, I mean, doing even worse. <laughs> we're, at the, <laughs> we're at the bottom of, <laughs> of one point. So, uh, yeah, looking good. Looking good, Chelsea. So, we've uh, lost one and drawn one. So And we've got AC Milan. So, good luck to us. Uh, so, I'd, I'm not looking forward to that. Anyway, anyway, enough said about that. Is there anything you guys want to touch on before we wrap it up? No, nothing from my end. Yeah, looking forward to all being back, I guess. Yeah, it's good to have all back. Lewandowski's uh, been banging the goals for Barcelona. I've been watching and that's been quite interesting to see. Barca... I'm quite sure what's going on there. I, I keep on hearing reports, which is just the same old thing, that Messi's going to not renew his contract at PSG. He's going to go back to Barcelona. I'm just like, you guys wish. You guys wish. Uh, but actually, quickly, before we wrap it up, what's your guys' view on Ronaldo? Because obviously, he hasn't played... <clears throat> he hasn't started really any games uh, recently for Manchester United. And then for Portugal, a lot of people were saying he looked very old. I mean, just looked his age. And it's almost as if like over... Not overnight, maybe in the last couple of months, age has really caught up to him now. And, and that's probably understandable. He's 38 years old. But uh, Ash, quickly, what's your thoughts on that? Do you agree? Yeah, I mean, yeah, it would make sense, right? He's, he is you know, definitely not young anymore. Um, and I can't, yeah, I can see him potentially moving away in January. I'm not exactly too sure where. Uh, I, saw, I saw one um, report came out. I don't know how you know, reliable it was, but it was saying basically one of the reasons why Tuchel got sacked was because um, Bowley really wanted Chelsea to get Ronaldo, but Tuchel was very much adamant against that. Um, and then the guy even said, he said he had an inside source there, and he said Ronaldo was coming to Chelsea in January, um, which, yeah, again, not a clue on actually how much you can actually read into that. But um, yeah. it seems Indeed. like, yeah, it's kind of coming. It's the beginning of the end for 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 Ronaldo in terms of a man you I feel at least. Mm. Ali, what do you think? I'm upset, man. Ronaldo's my guy, bro. Like Ronaldo is my favorite football of all time. So it's really sad to see him go through all of this. I think I mean I I've like I said I feel sorry for Ronaldo so much, but in in the grand scheme of things, Manchester United is more than just a player. It's not it's not Ma- uh, Ronaldo United Football Club. It's Manchester United Football Club. So if it works out better for the club, for him to stay out of it, so be it. And like Ash said, I do see Ronaldo potentially moving in January. I think I, his hunger and desire is just what's pushing him towards competing at the highest elite level. I see him moving, if not in January, then definitely end of this season. Unless, unless, unless... United somehow manage to qualify for the Champions League or and go very far in the other in the Premier League and the other domestic competitions. But I think, like I said, this is the beginning of the end for Ronaldo. And I think now he needs to manage it well. Otherwise, his career is going to go down for tatters and his legacy will be tarnished by how he by the potential, you know, negative performances he's been putting in. 
or negative outlook he has? My view is that I don't think I don't think even if he was to not score a single goal for the next like two years, I don't think his his legacy would be tarnished because he's just he's banged in so many goals for such a long period of time and he's 38 years old. So I feel like this is now a new chapter in his career and it's a new chapter where he is old. Like he is old. I mean, he's he's still I don't think he looks like a 30, I think he looks like a 35, 36 year old because he's just that fit. But he, before he was looking like a 30 year old like last year. That, I mean, that's how good he looked in terms of uh, speed. And in, I think also he is managing his he, managing bursts as well, really well in games, etc., in matches. And uh, you know, the quality never goes in that sense. But I think maybe with other players, say like a Messi, they have the passing ability to like lean on and they can be a playmaker and just like they can sit there, pick up the ball, just move it, pick up the ball, move it, move it, move it. Uh, and uh, you know, obviously, he's still got some of those facets, but Messi, but he's, you know, that's, he's becoming more and more into that kind of midfielder, uh, attacking midfielder, right? Which, who, who just takes the game. Ronaldo is not a bad passer of a ball, but he's not on that level. He is more striker, pace, power, heading ability, right? He is taking on people. Taking on people has kind of gone to the back seat, but uh, it was those very, very short, fast bursts of just blowing teams away, blowing defenses away. Um, and I just think maybe with age, it just I mean, it's amazing he's managed to elongate it for as long as it's gone on for. And he will go down as one of the greats, if not the greatest. I know in some people's eyes, but it is sad. But at the same time, it's understandable. And I think people need to give him a break in the sense that what do they expect, right? Father Time is undefeated in every single sport. And there's a reason why, like, a great, like, for example, Federer retired the other day because, uh, for, in Tennessee, because he's 41 years old and that's it. Like, he can't do it anymore. His body's breaking down. When your body gives up. There's nothing more you can do. It doesn't matter if you've got the drive or determination or the mentality is still there. Uh, if your body's not going to do what you want it to do, then that's it. But yeah, that's my thoughts anyway on it. But thank you guys. I just wanted to ask because I've seen a lot of people talking about it and obviously you're a little bit upset about it. And, uh, I, I can see why, especially if you're a massive Ronaldo fan. But I wonder whether he could just be maybe how Ibrahimovic has been for the last few years, which is uh, being a substitute for coming on and having an impact in, say, 20-minute bursts. Uh, but I'm not sure whether his psyche and mentality is quite driven to that or wired to that. I feel like Ibrahimovic kind of made peace with it, uh, but probably took a bit of time as well. I wonder whether uh, Ronaldo can do the same thing. We'll see. Anyways, thanks so much, guys. Appreciate it. Uh, remember to hit that like button if you're watching on YouTube and subscribe if you're new. If you are listening on a podcast platform, leave a rating or review. It really does help us out. Uh, this is, I don't know what number podcast. I think it's number eight uh, of the Quality Shot Football Podcast. And we hopefully we'll be back next week and with a lot more to discuss because Premier League would have finished uh, on the weekend. And hopefully if we can maybe do it, time it well so the Champions League matches are finished as well. Thanks very much, one guys. Stay thing, safe. Thing. Oh, well, oh, go on, go on. One last thing. Where, where, oh. where does he go? Where does Ronaldo go next? Like, if he moves, I genuinely like he's done it to me. He might just go to the MLS or something. No, I don't think he will go MLS after no? United. No, he'll stay within Europe. He will fight for the Champions League. Ronaldo will fight for the Champions League. He'll fight With to who? play the Champions League. Could he join PSG? No, PSG? PSG could be Chelsea. If Chelsea looking for a marquee signing. I see. Him, I do not see him dropping out of the Champions League. It's only PSG, I think, if Messi leaves. I don't think they can afford, even PSG can't afford that. With Mbappe, Neymar, Messi and Ronaldo, impossible. And also, where does he fit in? There are only four people, four up front. Like, it's just ridiculous. And anyway, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. It, it, I think it's definitely something that we can discuss uh, come as we approach the end of the season because I think it's looking quite likely. Unless suddenly he has an integral part of the Manchester, Manchester United season, and they continue to win, and then potentially fight for some trophies, mm -hmm. I, I don't see him staying on a season, but we'll see. Mm -hmm. Cool. Thanks very much, guys. Stay safe well.